Hello, everyone. Um, let's uh, start by uh, saying that while CLNP is making progress, that's a little comfort to those uh, who have no power. I certainly understand that and, and uh, understand it uh, 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 from my conversations with our fellow citizens, although I have to say that they're bearing up amazingly well, but I can tell how frustrated everyone is and certainly how frustrated the Lieutenant Governor and I are. Uh, CLNP tells us uh, that, um, uh, uh, that uh, as was the case in the aftermath of Irene, once the infrastructure repairs uh, have been made, tens of thousands of people can be put back online quickly. They're still saying uh, just about everyone will have their power back by Sunday at midnight. I'm pushing them to get it done as fast as possible, faster than that, certainly. Uh, they will be speaking to you in a few minutes, but before we get to that, I do want to bring everyone up to speed on a few other issues. Uh, as always, for those looking for information on how to get help, uh, please go to uh, the website www.ct.gov. And of course, you can continue to find information on shelters uh, and warming stations, uh, and for many, most importantly, charging stations at www.211ct.org. Uh, carbon monoxide poisoning continues to be an issue. Um, so far, 187 people have been seen for carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, please, folks, be careful out there. Nothing uh, inside your uh, house should be running on an engine uh, unless it's fueled by electricity, and that's obviously not the case. Uh, a few other notes. I have signed two executive orders today. One extends the deadline for personal property tax declarations, um, uh, which uh, uh, fell on November 1st uh, or by November 1st, and the other extends the deadline for unemployment insurance tax filing. I will file um, other uh, executive orders as required uh, to extend appropriate deadlines because we obviously know that uh, many of our towns uh, are not in position to accept uh, those kinds of reports. Um, uh, let's see. As of last night, I requested an amendment to the presidential declaration, which is still pending, uh, but that would give us access uh, for additional financial assistance for cities, towns, and the state. It is clear to us that the damage incurred during the storm far exceeds that which we had during Irene, so I asked for an expedited assessment uh, phase of the declaration. I have to say we have not heard um, uh, of a decision yet. Um, uh, I am growing impatient with that as well. Uh, I uh, had conversations earlier today with Governor Deval Patrick concerning the same uh, and uh, uh, Governor Lynch, uh, who assured me that uh, he would be filing his own uh, expedited uh, review request. Uh, food and water distribution to cities and towns. Food and water has been delivered to 41 towns. Currently, 19 towns are in progress of receiving uh, those orders. Over 12,500 meals ready to eat. MREs have been uh, distributed. Over 11,000 bottles, uh, I think this is cases of water, uh, have been distributed. Uh, on the road front, five state roads uh, remain closed. It is our hope that we'll have those open by morning. Uh, that will mean that we have opened 150 uh, state roads uh, um, uh, in the interim. Rail all lines are now operating on normal schedules. That includes Danbury and the Waterbury lines. Bradley uh, has power, uh, is operating on full power now. The last time I was here, they were only partial power. Uh, before I turn it over to the utilities, I want to continue to urge those who can volunteer to volunteer. Many uh, already have. Uh, as your power comes back and you have a volunteering spirit, please uh, respond to those who need you. Uh, or even if you're currently without power but have the means to volunteer, in one of our shelters, please join. I would also ask that doctors uh, and nurses uh, who have uh, uh, some expertise uh, uh, please lend themselves to the shelters as they exist throughout the state. A visit by a doctor or nurse is very encouraging, particularly those uh, for those who have disability or heart, uh, or, excuse me, or health concerns. Uh, so if you can, please do so. Uh, call your Red, Claw Red Cross uh, shelter or warming station. Uh, most of them can use your assistance. The last thing I want to say is thank you uh, to the people of Connecticut. Uh, they are strong and resilient. Uh, they are responding um, as we would expect them to do as fellow Connecticut residents. Uh, I know the frustration, but I have to tell you, uh, every visit I made today was an uplifting experience. Uh, Connecticut citizens are tremendous uh, in their uh, ability to adapt, and, and I'm proud of, of, of all of them. Uh, now I want to get back to the power issue and then answer some questions that you may have. So I'll turn it over to Jeff Butler. Jeff? Thank you, Governor. <coughs> Good afternoon. Before I get started, I'd like to correct something that I said this morning about weather forecasts. Both Northeast Utility, our parent company, and CLNP were both aware of the severe weather forecasted 
for Saturday, October 29th, based on Friday's weather forecast. We, CLMP, took action on Friday and placed 100 percent of our available field personnel on call beginning at 7 a.m. on Saturday. We notified our contractors that were working for us on the property to be available to support the restoration if needed. We also received commitments from additional 30 contractor crews from outside the state as well on Friday. We part beginning on uh, Saturday, we'd be participating in mutual aid discussions uh, early Saturday, and by Saturday afternoon, we were seeking an additional 250 crews, which uh, as we went through the night and early Sunday morning, we increased that request to 1,000 crews. This morning, I said it was Saturday when we knew about the extent of the storm. I, I, I misspoke. You know, be, be very honest with you, the days have begun to run, run, run together. We had actually been tracking this event for a number of days. The severity of the storm became a, a larger issue on, on Friday. Uh, the point I was trying to make this morning, and I obviously didn't do a very good job of it, was the storm came in earlier and was more intense than what we had expected. And that, uh, that is true uh, from all the forecasts we had. We were expecting significant snow, but I will still tell you we received far more snow than we were expecting. Uh, I was not taking issue with any of the meteorologists. I was simply trying to compare the warning and heightened awareness we had with Irene. If you remember, we had five days advance no notice versus the storm we just incurred. You know, I recognize I wasn't clear on what I meant to say, and for that I apologize, and uh, certainly apologize for the confusion I created. Now let me update you on the progress over the last 10 hours and where we expect to be tomorrow morning. As I mentioned earlier today, we continue to focus on restoration, but we continue to work with the municipalities in the state to make safe, clear roads, and restore business districts to and, uh, as well as to address critical customers. As of 3 p.m. today, we have over 5,000 employees and contractors work on this restoration. This includes 1,213 line and tree crews. We expect at least an additional 100 line crews to be available to work tomorrow, and I expect that number to continue to increase as we look, for, look out to bring in uh, additional crews. And I know in some parts of Northeast and New England, uh, some utilities are winding down their restoration. We're looking at the availability of those crews, similar to what we did with UI in here in Connecticut. Uh, let me po also pause a minute to address a question about the payment of our contractors. Our practice is to pay all invoices in a timely manner after a thorough review to, assurance, to assure all costs are prudent. After a major storm, it's not unusual for us to receive invoices for several months after we complete restoration. There are some invoices uh, related to Irene that are still being reviewed, processed, and, some, and many have been paid. Most of the contractors we use in Irene who were available are also working for us in this storm. As I said this morning, uh, following up on, on restoration, as I said this morning, we plan to restore another 1,000 or 125,000 to 150,000 customers, and that was from this morning through tomorrow morning, and we uh, still are expected to meet that, which would put us uh, at or below 425,000 customers remaining out of power tomorrow morning. You know, we are making progress. I realize certainly as with the forecast of cold temperatures, you know, for many of you it's not fast enough. We will continue to work diligently to get people's power back to them as quickly and safely as possible. Thank you. Jeffrey, I still don't think that we've had a clear answer on why you had trouble getting crews coming here. Governor Patrick in Massachusetts was quoted in the Boston area media today as saying he was very impressed with the unprecedented number of crews that they have in eastern Massachusetts. Why could they get them and you couldn't? I, I don't know what has gone on in Massachusetts. I will tell you, it's not about the fact that we haven't been able to get all the crews. We're actually at this point in the restoration for this storm, we have more line crews on the property than at the same point for Irene. The challenge is how do we get them here sooner after the event? That is the, the challenge that, you know, it would have been nice to have 600 line crews here on Monday not Wednesday. So it's not a matter of, of, we are getting the crews, we continue to get crews, it's how do we get them here sooner to support restoration. There's also problems with when you're telling people they're going to be restored. Now I know you have this, the website is up and, and making the projections now, but we were in the uh, Blue Hills area, the north end of Hartford today, where people told us they were told yesterday that their power would be up between 1 and 6 p.m. yesterday. It didn't happen. They called last night and they said, well, no, it won't be on until at least November 7th. I'm, I'm not aware of uh, those type of uh, restoration dates going in the system, so I'm not sure where they heard that from. They said they up got until it on the telephone. Point, 
on the telephone Pardon? from your from your information. I account. have not seen that kind of specific information in any of our systems that would communicate that back I to the customer. Related question about you said after the last storm and in the first days of this storm that you would do more provide accurate information uh, about when people could have their power restored. You, you said yesterday and today you mentioned this list of towns. A hundred out of the 140 that were listed have as their expected restoration time 11.59 p.m. Sunday, which is your prop dead deadline for the whole shebang. Do you really look at that as accurate information? It's almost an insult to people. Let, let me explain that. That, that <laughs> was the information we're providing to let towns know when we expect to have 99% of their towns restored. At an, event, all say the same thing. at an event level, if somebody was calling in for a specific outage, if we have a crew assigned to that location and we're working that job, if they're calling in, they should get specific information for their restoration. So as we assign work, as we put work packages together, assign work, and the crews are out there working on a section that will bring customers back, information should be going on our system for those 100, 500 customers that if they were calling that said their power would be restored, whatever the time frame is, that that work's going to be completed. So at a town level, yes, we got that information in so that towns understood, because that was a big issue in, in, uh, in Irene. The focus here is as we get out there and we're working in, in neighborhoods or in areas, that we get the specific event information in when we have crews working there. So as people follow that, if we're working on their areas, they can see that restoration information for their specific area sooner. The Speaker of the House and the House uh, Chairwoman of the Energy and Technology <coughs> Committee uh, today uh, said that uh, the House Democrats were proposing legislation when the, the legislature returns in February to uh, would be battled be modeled after the, a Massachusetts law that uh, sets standards regarding uh, restoring power after uh, emergencies and uh, setting up fines for utilities if uh, they don't meet those deadlines or, or fail to live up to the standards. Uh, what do you think of that? Will you guys be supporting that legislation? Well, what 100% uh, of my focus right now is the restoration of our customers. Now, we will work with the, the legislature, we'll work with the administration on issues, but today my focus is I have 500, over 500,000 customers still on a power that need to be restored. We'll so support what the, we'll support what the administration is doing. Have to abide by that law, do they not? We'll address that after this restoration is completed. Governor, do you support that concept? Uh, that there sure. should be power outage restoration standards, readiness standards, numbers of crews requirements, and fines if they don't come through. Well, you know, this is what I would say. Uh, first of all, I, I agree that, that uh, all of this needs to be addressed and looked at very seriously. That's why I've already asked, um, and uh, Mr. McGee has agreed, uh, that the Irene Commission will become uh, the two-storm commission. Uh, and I certainly uh, don't want to prejudge uh, without getting their reports, uh, but if their reports uh, speak to that issue, I can assure you we'll act on them. Well, what do you think of the idea? I mean, uh, that's, that's, I mean, they're going to be recommending a lot of things. So, I mean, what do you think of the, the basics of that idea? Well, you know, it, 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 I, first of all, I, I think benchmarking standards uh, is something that I have always supported. Uh, uh, and, uh, and I inherited a state where uh, a prior administration was responsible for uh, not allowing utilities to spend more money on, on tree removal and tree trimming. So do I think changes need to be made? The answer is yes. Uh, do I think that the time to do that is uh, in the middle of, of this particular uh, set of circumstances? The answer is no. Uh, do I believe that we need to have a, an orderly uh, discussion uh, and to align our laws in such a way as to uh, give uh, the people of Connecticut the highest level of confidence uh, in their utilities? The answer is yes. What are you referring to there, not allowing them to? to uh, specifically uh, in their rate hearings. Uh, they had asked to spend more money on uh, 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 tree trimming, uh, and a lower number was approved. That's what I'm specifically referring to. The old uh, and, and, and that from a guy who, as mayor, uh, had a pretty uh, uh, substantial uh, reputation as wanting to see more trees trimmed in my community and pushing the envelope both with respect to the utilities and, and their trimming there, but also our own trimming uh, of trees. So yep. you're, you're, excuse me, uh, you're talking to a guy who believes that, that the, the state uh, needs to require of itself uh, and of its utility and its other utility partners, not just uh, uh, the energy companies, uh, that, that we do a better job, that this state have a policy of doing a better job to prevent these kinds of incidences uh, from reaching to the extent they have. Having said that, uh, this was a pretty
pretty awesome storm. Um, uh, and the last time that Connecticut received this amount of snow in October was never. So uh, what I'm saying to you is, let's concentrate on making sure that people don't die from carbon monoxide poisoning, making sure that the 100 plus uh, shelters that uh, are currently serving our citizens and where thousands of our citizens will be sleeping tonight uh, have uh, what they need to, to most appropriately care for the people uh, who are there, including the elderly, the, the disabled, and those with medical uh, requirements. That, that's what I'm concentrating on. Mr. Butler, could you uh, get back up on the podium, please? Could, could you tell us why United Illuminating is all finished and you guys are still working away? Well, when you look at the magnitude of damage uh, that they incurred, similar to what you saw in the shoreline area uh, for CLMP, the damage wasn't as severe as along the coast. Snow was much less along the entire shoreline. It was really, what would it be, north and west of, of, uh, of I-84, where the significant amount of damage occurred. Did, about did, uh, excuse me, but did you lose power at your house, and do you have a generator? I have a generator, and I still don't have any power at my house. You talk about restoration being so important. Uh, obviously, out-of-state crews are a big part of that. We know several neighboring states are offering these out-of-state crews double time, yet we're hearing that you are not. Can you talk to that uh, to get crews in? Uh, all of our out-of-state crews, we honor whatever contract we have. So we pay whatever contract. Many of the mutual aid crews do, in fact, pay double time, and that's what we pay. We have, a, you know, there's mutual aid agreements, contractual agreements for these types of things set up in advance, and we honor those. So what's going to have to be done then to get the crews to come to our state rather than the neighboring states? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we got more crews at this point in this restoration than we had in Irene. My issue is how do we get them here sooner? As I mentioned, we also have the majority of uh, the uh, contractors and, and others that were available that assisted us in Irene are also here. If they're available, we're also here assisting us. So you talk about getting them here sooner. How do we do that? Do you need to put them on that's, standby sooner, or, or what are you going to? I think that's there? a process that we got to step back and look at after this, and and what what is not just for CLMP, but at the industry. How do we assure that we get the proper amount of crews to a location in a timely fashion to bring customers back as quickly as possible? That's not just critical here; it's critical everywhere. Your company consider. Uh, we talked about this business model the last time. The last time. Will your company consider increasing the number of its in-state line crews, or will you stick with the model of keeping what you have and relying on out-of-state help? Well, I think you're asking a number of different questions there. It's, you know, what, is your, what is your base workload that you have people to support, and then do you use contractors or others? We have contractors in this state that, we, that are working for CLMP or NU a considerable amount of time. So it's stepping back, looking at that balance. We would never have enough line crews in this state to support the restoration of either I, uh, her, Tropical Storm Irene or this storm. But do you so think how do we look? Cruise is enough for 1.2 million customers. For most day-to-day -day business, yes. Well, it's 200 that we have. Plus, we typically have, as I mentioned in Irene, another 50 plus contractors that are in in the area doing work primarily for us. And you so say that's enough. You're happy with that response. Day in and day out, that well, uh, me, meets me, the needs. Let me just step in and say, what I, I'll, I'll repeat what I said to you, and that is that I believe that it has to be benchmarked. Um, and, and quite clearly, the commission, the, uh, the Irene Commission, which is now the two-storm commission, uh, uh, needs to, to benchmark uh, what is an appropriate staffing level for the number of customers or the, or, or the number of, uh, or the amount of energy sold or whatever. Uh, I, I, I don't think we can get to, to, to that number today in this process. Uh, suffice it to say that we need to uh, uh, make sure uh, uh, that, that we are properly benchmarked. I fear that perhaps uh, over a period of time uh, that was not done, um, and, and it needs to be done. Um, and a couple other questions. Uh, I have uh, one uh, more uh, question uh, for Jeffrey. Sure. Yeah. Uh, no, Jeffrey, I just got an email from a viewer who was watching this who said that she had the same experience like the lady that told me up in the Blue Hills. She's in Wethersfield, and she says she called yesterday and was told on the phone by her people that her power would be on by 6 p.m. yesterday. It didn't happen. Call tomorrow. She calls today, and they said, no, it won't be on until Sunday. I will what? follow up tonight to find out what's going on, because that is a process check that we were trying to repair. Okay. Go ahead. How many deaths are, is your administration now attributing to the storm now? Is it seven? And I also saw on TV that some towns are having people go out and check people's generators and make sure. Is that even feasible? Do you think that we should try to do more to reach out to people? Make sure the well, generators are installed? Yeah, well, for, uh, uh, 
you know, this is an interesting and, and, and thorny issue because uh, a number of people have uh, uh, have not taken out permits to, to, to install a generator. So to the extent that local officials uh, could assist in doing that, I think that's a great thing to do. Uh, we had we had an exhaustion issue, I think, with a number of uh, fire departments in the state. Um, everyone seems to have caught their breath. That would be a great thing for volunteer as well as uh, uh, paid uh, companies to be engaged in. Uh, anything we can do to communicate the danger of carbon monoxide. And listen, when you when you talk about 187, 189 uh, incidences of carbon monoxide poisoning, any one of which could have turned into death, uh, it's a pretty scary proposition. I began talking about that as as soon as the storm had 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 uh, uh, concluded. So I, I certainly uh, want to see us do as much as we can. What number are you going with? Well, clearly, frustration is just boiling over. Right now, we still have 520,000 people across the state without power. It's cold. They're trying to get to soup mm -hmm. kitchens that don't have power. So clearly, you can see this back and forth the longer that this goes right. on. And as the governor just said, 187 being treated for CO poisoning, that is very dangerous. That's right. And uh, the governor is saying that CLMP expects, expects to have all the power back on by Sunday evening. Uh, among other things, five state roads remain closed. He hopes to have all those roads back open by morning.